Looking for more expert investing advice? You should check out the experts and analysts page on smallcappower.com. And while you're there, be sure to check the experts and analysts top 20 picks. It's under the premium research tab. Happy investing from your friends at Small Cap Power. The Small Cap Power Expert Interview. Dr. Luisa Moreno has 10 years of experience as a publishing research analyst and academic researcher, working primarily in the field of material science and mineral resources. Few other analysts focus on the technical threshold issues of engineering such as she does. As a frequent speaker at international conferences on commodities and strategic metals and materials, she is a sought-after consultant to numerous mining and processing companies. In May 2014, Small Cap Power was pleased to have Dr. Moreno in our studio, where we asked her about her specialty and why these metals are important. Strategic metals um, are um, different metals from those that are the most common ones, which you would say would be copper, steel, which is an alloy of iron. The most specialty materials would be the, the rarest, uh, for instance, graphite, uh, lithium, antimony. So there are many materials that last. They have they come under different names. Some folks call them uh, minor metals. Um, uh, others call them strategic materials. Uh, but essentially, they. They are very important because they are used in a number of um, advanced devices that we use currently. And they're also uh, important for a number of uh, technologies, the so-called modern uh, green technologies that are emerging uh, in the market space. Uh, so for this reason, they have become very, very important. And some of them are, like for instance, the rare earth, graphite, tungstens, and so forth. Uh, are mainly produced uh, in, in China. China has a significant control of these materials, which makes some of them to be uh, more critical, uh, you know, because the supply, uh, you know, is a bit more, say, constrained. There's more constraint in supply. There was a noticeable amount of investor interest in the rare earth stocks a couple of years back, but that has cooled since. Do you know why that is? Uh, back in 2010, we um, started seeing an, an increase in demand for for, um, for rare earth and rare earth prices, but prices really picked um, after the incident between China and, and Japan. As I uh, indicated earlier, uh, China is a, a significant producer of many of these strategic uh, uh, materials, and, uh, and rare earth is no exception. They uh, still control a significant percentage, and so, Essentially what happened at that time, uh, as you may be aware, there's a dispute, a territorial dispute between China and, and Japan. And uh, at one point, the one, one of uh, uh, f Chinese fishermen were arrested by Japanese authorities. And what China did, they halted uh, the exports of rare earth into, into Japan. Um, so at that point, Japan, um, which it's a significant manufacturer of many of these technologies that uh, uh, basically use rare earth and other strategic materials, realized that they needed to find other sources. And because of the constraints in uh, supply from China, uh, and um, the other important point that uh, uh, it's important to, to, to notice as far as rare earth is concerned, is that China Prior to 2005, did not have export quotas, and they implemented those export quotas in 2005, and from there on started decreasing uh, the, the quotas. Do you expect China's domination of the market to continue for the foreseeable future? Are there any other mines expected to begin production in other countries in the next year or two? Well, uh, yes, yeah, so China controls a number of these uh, materials, and uh, in the very near term, um, I do not foresee uh, a significant contribution from outside China. So in terms of the rare earth, we know that Molycore uh, is ramping up production and they've been trying to do that for a while. Um, the same with, with Linus in, in Malaysia. And so, you know, hopefully they will be able to advance uh, the, the production and the ramp up into next year. Uh, 
these two companies, however, they produce mainly um, uh, light rare earth, so there's still going to be a need uh, of t a need to find uh, mines that can produce uh, the less common heavy rare earth. Uh, so if you look in terms of vanadium, for instance, uh, there was one mine in Australia uh, that uh, was ramping up production and there was an incident, a fire, is the Windermura uh, deposit. Uh, so there was an incident there. The only other really um, deposit or project that is coming up with, with vanadium now is Largo Resources, for instance. So that is very positive, uh, but um, in terms of graphite, for instance, we know that China also has a, a controls a, a good percentage of that market, 775%. We have a number of projects, some in Africa, uh, like CIRA, uh, but a number of them in Canada. We have Focus, Mason, uh, and, and so forth. So this, in the near term, by near term I mean maybe the next two years, I do not foresee uh, production, but uh, in the next three to five years, hopefully, you know, we'll see more supply outside. Are there any one of these particular metals and minerals that you think will outperform the others this year? These materials are used in uh, different industries. I mean, many of them are technology materials. So if you look, for instance, two um, sectors, let's call it, so the LED space uh, or sector and uh, the lithium battery space, um, so in, in the LED space, um, there are a number of materials that are going to be used in that. As you may be aware, uh, there's a number of, of policies uh, around the world, even China, but a lot in, uh, in Canada, US as well as Europe. The policies are to phase out uh, incandescent lights and, and adopt fluorescent and LED lights. And LED lights, for instance, uh, require the number of uh, strategic materials, which includes gallium, um, includes europium, which is one of uh, the rares, is a medium, uh, sometimes it's grouped with the heavies as well. And, uh, and they will also need um, high purity alumina, which is more of a specialty material. Um, and um, in the lithium space, you know, you will need, depending on the lithium battery technology, uh, assuming that this lithium ion battery has been used in cars, so obviously lithium is going to be very important. It seems that that is going to be the, the battery technology of choice. But also depending on the type of battery, you may need uh, cobalt, uh, graphite, uh, nickel, uh, and uh, a number of other uh, less common metals. So um, I, would, uh, I would say the, these metals will be very interesting and the supply, um, sorry, I would say the demand for, for these materials that I indicated for these two sectors, I think uh, will be very positive. What companies do you like in the rare earth and strategic metal space at this time and why? In, in the rare earth, um, a number of companies uh, have been able to advance. As you know, the mining, the mining space uh, is pretty tough for financing at the moment. Uh, so in the rare earth space, we have, for instance, Tasman. Uh, they, are, they have a, a heavy rare earth deposit in Europe, and the stock has been performing uh, well in the last six months. And the company just raised some funds recently, and they are advancing their Norichar uh, deposit. It's, again, it's a heavy deposit in, in Europe. Um, other two interesting companies as well that I'm watching very closely, one is Avalon, and the other one is Quest. Those are companies that they have, um, uh, they won one of more, most advanced in terms that they have put out a uh, feasibility study in the case of, uh, of Quest, they actually have a pre-feasibility study. Uh, but they have done uh, significant tests to reduce their capital costs. Um, and um, in the case of Vavilon, they have an agreement with Solvay for the separation of materials, which was, was very interesting to see. So uh, we do cover Avalon, we don't cover Quest, but um, we are watching these two companies in the space uh, very closely. Another one which is very interesting is Ucor. They are waiting for house uh, approval in Alaska uh, for, for um, funding uh, about two-thirds of the capex for their project. So that's really interesting. Um, as far as lithium is concerned, there's a number of companies we're watching very closely as well. RB Energy, uh, they have a lithium, Quebec lithium deposit. They're close to production. They expect to reach uh, the full capacity, annualized full capacity by the end of this year. 
and another company in Quebec as well, this is Namaska Lithium. They are targeting the hydroxide market instead of the lithium carbonate. So they're using a different technique uh, to produce. And we also like uh, critical elements. They have tantalum, uh, potentially, as a byproduct. So in the lithium spaces, that's sort of the names uh, that, we are, um, that we are looking, looking at. We understand that your firm is hosting an upcoming lithium graphite conference. Can you tell our viewers more about this? Yes, there's been an increased interest in lithium and, and in graphite for, for battery applications. And so we decided to invite a number of potential or future lithium and graphite producers, but also uh, end users and um, scientists that are involved uh, in development of uh, li lithium battery technologies. So we are inviting, for instance, Electrovia, uh, AMG, Advanced Metallurgical Group, uh, Asbury, Graphite, and a number of other, like I said, uh, juniors um, like uh, RB Energy, Namaska, Focus, and so forth. So we want to be discussing a number of um, important questions that uh, investors are asking. For instance, what's the difference between uh, natural and, graph uh, and synthetic graphite? How big uh, is the lithium market? Uh, you know, all of these uh, questions we want to be uh, addressing and discussing. Thank you for taking the time for the interview, Dr. Moreno. My pleasure. Thank you for having me. Looking for more expert investing advice? You should check out the Experts and Analysts page on smallcappower.com. And while you're there, be sure to check the Experts and Analysts Top 20 Picks. It's under the Premium Research tab. Happy investing from your friends at Small Cap Power.